I know that tech is very strong in India. A lot of it is just outsourcing. They don't have much ownership. What your view is on the current day um, kind of oppression or whatever, the financial climate of India? Right. Is there an it's economic- a little more complicated than that in the sense that there's also high-end outsourcing going on. So you've got mm-hmm. Boeing, for example, get some very sophisticated airline wing parts, airlines being made uh, by R&D outfits in India. Philips has more R&D employees in India than they have in the Netherlands. E, the same thing. Intel is expanding its research footprint in India. So there is high-end working ta- work taking place as well. It's not just the call centers asking you to pay your credit card bills. Mm-hmm. So that's there too. He, the big worry is that a lot of what India has been doing well uh, because of skilled human beings could well be taken away by artificial intelligence. So right now, for example, MRIs in Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston are being read by trained radiologists in India. I'm told they're not developing an artificial intelligence software that will read those MRIs for free, essentially, in America. Medical transcription was a booming industry in India. A doctor would dictate his notes at the end of a day into a a machine or a phone line. Uh, While he was asleep, uh, a qualified Indian paramedic would type them up with all the right vocabulary and so on. And when the doctor came in the next morning, he would read this out. Now with voice recognition software and AI, he may not need to do that anymore. He might uh, have it done for him in his office. And so it goes. So uh, India is more and more vulnerable to advances in technology that may actually take our people out of their value added in employment. Manufacturing is already, China sees the opportunity at the right time. India was too late. Uh, India has gone in for this make in India campaign, but there's a real worry that we will be asking companies to make in India things that will not be made by human beings anywhere because robots will be doing it. So there's that risk as well that's facing us. Um, so there are some real challenges, absolutely real challenges. Um, as far as trade is concerned, right now, we're not doing terribly well. But don't forget that the days when India and China accounted for 50% of global GDP are in any case, not only over, they're never coming back. China has climbed up to about 16% of global GDP, but it's a long way down from its peak, which I think at the most was 29 at one point. It's not going to get there. I mean, the world is now a more complicated place. More countries have prospered. So I would rather now start focusing as an Indian policymaker on what we can do to ensure decent lives for our people and worry less about percentages and complications there. It was a relevant argument, I believe, in looking at the historical experience. But today, in policy terms, we just have to help, save, feed, employ, educate people. That's